Today we're going to be talking about the orbital apex syndrome. And as you know, the orbital apex is shaped like an ice cream cone on its side, and the apex is here. So the optic nerve has to pass through the optic canal, and the cranial nerves, in addition to the optic nerve number two, three, four, five, subdivision one, and six, all have to pass from the intracranial cavity into the intraorbital compartment through the superior orbital fissure and through the optic canal. And so when we have a patient who has a lesion in the orbital apex, we're looking for a combination of afferent and efferent problems. The afferent system, the optic nerve, decreased acuity, decreased visual field, and the presence of the relative afferent pupillary defect, either with a normal optic nerve, a swollen optic nerve, or if it's chronic, a pale optic nerve, plus the efferent system, cranial nerves three, four, and six, which produces diplopia and ophthalmoplegia. And we should test cranial nerve five, subdivision one, to see if we are dealing with a lesion on this side of the line, orbital apex, or into the cavernous sinus, which might include cranial nerve five, subdivision two, or further intracranially, subdivision three. So the combination of any of these cranial nerves, with or without proptosis, pushing the eye forward, is the sign of the ipsilateral orbital apex syndrome. The most common error is only imaging the head. So if we only do an MR of the head, we might miss a subtle orbital lesion. And so normally a patient who has an orbital apex problem has to have both an MRI of the head and the orbit. And typically we like to use fat suppression and gadolinium so that we can identify the orbital apex lesion. Once the lesion is identified, if it's in the acute setting, we should search for inflammatory causes, including granulomatous disease, like sarcoidosis, or IgG4, or other orbital inflammatory pseudotumors, and we have to make sure it's not orbital real tumor. The location in the orbital apex makes it difficult to biopsy, and so sometimes we'll just give empiric steroids if the patient is acute. If it's chronic, we're going to have to consult our colleagues in orbit and possibly neurosurgery for either a transorbital or transcranial approach to the lesion, but we would look elsewhere for another biopsy site before going into the orbital apex. So in summary, if you have the combination of afferent, optic nerve afferent, or sensory afferent, trigeminal, and the efferent, ophthalmoplegia nerves 3, 4, and 6, we should be thinking about the orbital apex.